Welcome, Grab Shine. My name's John. We have purposely trained him wrong as a joke. I'm Zach. And this is the 13 <sighs> Days of Terror. And this is Disturbed. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. Another dull day passes as you struggle to manage your failing farm. Your crops are beginning to wilt and your cow is sick. So I know this is like a visual novel. Do I just click? I do. Okay. Yeah. So our cow is down with the sickness right now. Oh, it's all tying together. Yeah, yeah. For some time, the land has been very quiet. The air has grown thick and foul. Each passing day, you feel more uncertain if things will ever return to how they were before. Perhaps it is up to you. Oh, yeah. You've made up your mind. You're going to do something about it. You're going to kill everyone. Oh, no. Art's nice. You stand in front of your humble home. So, this is a group vote. I vote, you vote, and then everyone will send their votes to the past to us. Yeah. I think everyone's saying shit. That's why I hear I think they're saying shed too. We could always get some items from the shed that seems like a good place to go. <clears throat> you attempt to open the shed door, but the door won't budge. You remember locking it some time ago, but you can't remember what you did with the key. Well, we gotta go look for the fucking key in our house then. Yeah, definitely. The crops are where aliens are. Yeah. Entering the house, you feel subtle uneasiness as if the growing blight outside has penetrated the walls of your safe haven. From what you see, however, everything is the same as you left it. Well, then... Yeah, That's good. What the hell's going on? <laughs> Perhaps this may be a good time for you to just lay in bed and wish that your problems will just go away. You fight the notion, but the temptation is still there. Let's well, open we... our chest. Yeah. It's always worthwhile. You open the chest and find nothing but other than piles of papers. It seems you have less valuables than you anticipated. You close the chest. How depressing. Oh. Uh, read our journal? Dear Journal, another usual day on the farm. The crops are growing with good health. Beth, Bethan? Bethane? Beth. Beth is also doing quite well. Never disappointed with the milk she provides. If things continue to grow, go well, I may be able to invest in more animals. A farmer can only be so social with a cow. Hell yeah. Gotta have more animals to talk to. Beth Ann is my favorite cow. Dear Journal, today has been an unfortunate day. Beth Ann is dead. <laughs> Somebody broke into my shed and stole some things. I usually don't mind if someone steals a bite to eat from the from the garden, but to take my equipment? Well, I put a lock on the door, so that explains why there's a lock on the door now. Dear Journal, I woke up one night to a foul smell. I've never come across it before. Beth was here. I took a step <laughs> took a step outside to see what I could find, but I found nothing after searching the farm. Whatever it is, it must be bad. I should make a trip into the city to see what this is all about. Oh, cool. I guess we should just lay in bed. Or maybe we should go outside. Yeah, let's go outside. And we should go check out the crops. I guess so. But I didn't find the um, thing. Path divides the crops. You have labored so hard to prosper for these past months. A penetrating odor reminds you that your plants are decaying away and that time is running short. Oh. So there's a pen where <laughs> animals are. The pen where, where the stink is probably at. Yeah. Oh. Is it Beth Ann? Good lord. A toxic fume burns your nose as you enter the pen. Your poor cow lays lifeless on the ground as growing blight slowly begins to consume her body. Oh dear. That's fucked up. That's disturbed. <laughs> Ooh, <wow. laughs> you feel sick to your stomach. <laughs> As you stand here, especially as you stare at the black mushrooms that dot the ground. Maybe yes, inspecting the, the water is probably safer. Yeah. Grab the mushroom. You kneel down and grab the mushroom. God damn it. As you begin to rip it out of the ground, a cloud of spores spray from the mushroom. Your hands begin to burn and melt as you observe them. Do we I die? fucked up. Slowly, your body shrivels up. I was kind of kidding up, about the mushroom. <laughs> into a dark, moist consistency as poison spreads. You die, eventually, after crawling around on the ground. Your adventure ends here. Game over, yeah! Well, that was uh, disturbed. <laughs> now let's get back to where we were. What in the world? That was pretty cool. So yes. this time, we are not going to grab the mushroom. We'll inspect the water. Inspect the water. You inspect the water, looking for anything abnormal. You notice that the water has a dark consistency to it. Dropping a stone into it, 
Black particles from the bottom swirl, swirl about like a thunderstorm. Your face shrivels in disgust. Damn. Leave the pet. Don't grab the mushroom. We maybe be able to if we have some tools or something. Grab the knife. Grab the knife. Don't grab the mushroom. <laughs> I guess follow the path. Yeah. That's all we really have to do. You continue down the trail for a while until you see a cave off in the distance. You pause, questioning if there was something that could be helpful in there. Could be. Let's, let's save. All right. That'd be even nice. Into the cave we go. So why not? There's a faint whistle from the wind passing between the rocks. The temperature significantly cools as you enter the cave. Huh. You notice there's a different smell, but you welcome it. Comparing it to the deathly blight found outside. Outside, I guess that makes sense. Man, going in further in the cave sounds dangerous. We're already here. Damn it! That's a bear, John. <laughs> Bears are big and they hurt you. Well, Before you take your next step, a large bear emerges from the darkness. You realize that you have made a terrible mistake even thinking that something helpful can be in here. Oh, run away. The moment you turn to ru run, the bear roars with a deep growl, shaking the loose stones about the cave. All you can think about is making it home in one piece. Did we make it though? Hell no, we didn't make it. Well, you make it to the trail. Then the bear catches up to you, tackling you to the bears ground. Bears can run fast. Yes, they can. You scream in pain as the bear rips you apart. Your adventure ends here. Alright, oh, yeah. so this time we're going to continue down the path. We ain't going into that fucking cave unless we want to fight the bear with a sword or something. You come to a stop as you stumble upon a broken wagon. Alright, let's fucking just inspect the wagon and see what kills us this time. You look around the mess and find bits of food and clothes scattered about the scene. You notice a key on the ground during your search. You pick up the, the key and continue on your way. Can we go back? After what felt like an hour or two, you reach a bridge. Nearby the path is a small shack, similar to, your, to the house you have on the farm. The man that lives here is a kind fellow, from what you recall. Maybe he is home. Inspect the shack. Yeah, we're getting in there. You walk toward the structure and knock on the door. You scratch the back of your head, figuring the person that lives here is currently occupied, if not elsewhere. You remember picking up the key from the wagon and you use it on the door. Why uh -oh. would we do that? Uh-oh. You decide to help yourself in because you have no respect for anyone. Observing the empty room, you realize something terrible must have taken place. The room is a wreck, just like the wagon. You are overcome with fear as you think about of the man who used to dwell here. There's a book. There's a trapdoor that's almost certainly death. It sounds like some evil dead shit. Let's look at the book. You pick up the book and start to flip through the pages. You discover that this is a journal. Reading a passage or two can't hurt. Today's trading went smoothly. Thank goodness. What I am thrilled about, however, is what one of my buddies mentioned to me at the conclusion of our day. Apparently, there's a pond nearby that has some of the biggest fish in the region. With a good catch, I can make enough to move things forward. I was caught off guard when he mentioned that nobody has been able to catch any from there. I guess your typical fishing rod won't do the trick. But what can be done about it then? Something to be intrigued about, I suppose. Wow, what an intriguing journal. These past couple weeks have been really rough on me. My training business has gone under, and I have lost nearly everything I own. I am leaving this place forever, never to return. The land is dying, and there is nothing but darkness in, darkness here. Wow. Anyone read this should leave while they can. <laughs> I just said leave. Please stop reading. You can't find a name to give this man, but regardless of the name, you got chills running down your spine. Going down the trap door, even though there's scrapes leading there. You observe the trap door and notice the lock is keeping it closed. With the key, you unlock the hatch and get in. It's the same one that opened the door. Weird. Without thinking, you travel downward. I know you see that. The lady's just tied up. Maybe for reasons, but... Walking down the steps leading below, the air attacks your body with a piercing cold. You notice immediately that there's a woman chained to the wall. She doesn't seem to notice as you study her. You feel darkness surround you as you stay in this awful place. This is why you... Yeah, let's talk to her. As long as we don't, like, try to... Oh. You there! Let me out of here! The pressure of such a demand makes you freeze. You take a moment to think about the situation before you respond. That's a good question. What? What got you locked up to begin with? You'll never believe me, even if I told you the truth. Something brought you here. 
please have mercy on me. And fuck it, we already saved. Let's see what. It's like you know it's a bad she's decision. Gonna, she's gonna fuck. She's gonna us. kill us. You approach the woman and unlock the shackles that bind her. As her arms become free, she moans in pain. Oh, thank you so much. The woman struggles to regain her strength, but starts to stand up on her own. As she gets up, she turns towards you. God damn it. I will now do you a favor. She looks like like a vampire. Oh! Yeah. What seemed to be the face of a helpless woman disappears as a horrible image manifests itself before you. You feel the chilling grip of her bone hands lock onto your arms. We knew it. Energy flees from your body and you fall to your knees. Game over, man. I like going for all the bad endings, even though they're kind of obvious. Yeah. No, what's, what I wonder, though... We can go down there and check on it and be like, nah. Yeah, what if we say no? Like, does is that the same outcome? Or? She warned us into a... Well, well, we could talk to her. Yeah, let's talk to her. Um, so, let's do decline. Decline. I will not. No. Don't go. With, ah. With nothing else to interact with, you make your way up the stairs. As you exit, you hear the woman laugh behind you. Wow. The voice causes the shack to shake. You leave the shack as fast as you could. Oh, jeez. Cross the bridge. All right. Cross the bridge safely and continue down the trail. After all that has happened, you feel you should take a moment to rest. You find a spot under a tree and sit down. Getting comfortable, you tilt your head back against the tree and gaze into the sky. That's... Let's just pick at the grass. Yeah, I don't want to take a nap here. As you pick at the grass blades in your reach, the ground begins to shake. God damn it. Before you can get up, roots from below sprout from the ground and wrap around your legs. Oh man, Mr. Tree, it's not our fault. We didn't know there's tree people here. You turn around and see a large angry face looking at you. Your jaw drops in horror. No sound or scream escapes your tongue as the tightening grip of the root squeezes what air is, is left out from your body. Damn Shit, it. Shit, man. It's just always dying. We're not going to hurt anyone this time. We're just going to nap it up. Your eyes close and your body relaxes. You fall asleep within seconds. Your, as your mind wanders, you see a blurry image. Details emerge as you gaze. That's the tree. You wonder who this might be. A bad feeling then overcomes you. You realize who it is. You try to wake yourself up. You wake up and jump to your feet. Looking about yourself and your surroundings. All seems well. But you can't help but feel fearful that something bad will happen if, to you if you stay here. Moving forward seems like the only logical option now. We can go back to the shack. You reach a point where the trail splits into two paths. Which way should you go? Fuck it. Drop another save. Well, we know which way we're going. Adventurers always go left. Yeah. After continuing down the path for some time, you come to a stop. You notice that there is some sort of trail that leads to the grass up toward a nearby hill. If you had not stopped, you probably never would have noticed. Which way do you go? Continue mm. down the path, follow the trail in the grass, go back to where the path split. Let's see where this trail goes. Yeah, I mean... Maybe an animal made its way. Is that a sword? A sword, dude. Let's go back and slay that woman. Following the subtle trail in the grass, you stumble upon what looks like a grave. Oh. Man. Man respect the grave. You know this man. is bad. You approach the grave. And you look at the sword with intrigue. Whoa. Before you can touch the sword, a ghostly figure appears before you. You freeze before the apparition. What a wait. The sword. May I have it? The blade is cursed. I am bound here by the pain of my past. If you desire the sword, free me from it. You slowly motion for the sword. Fool! Only something of pure essence can free me. A rare hope, like a flower found in darkness. I right, let's grab the sword. We're gonna die. We're pure. You reach for the sword. Before you can lay a finger on it, the spirit grabs your arm. Oh shit. A sharp pain flows over your body as your flesh melts off your bones. You're dead. Game over. Do not touch me again. Let's go right. Let's see what's over here. You reach the end of the pathway. In the distance is a tower looking over the area. A gate secures a gate secures passage to the area with a wall around the property. Okay. Also of interest, there's a tree that has a hole carved into it. Huh. Inspect the tree. The tree is probably death. 
You approach the tree and notice that the hole is big enough for you to fit your hand in. Well, if I've learned anything from uh, James uh, Sun Sunderland, yeah. Sunderland, uh, put your hands in shit. You look and see something shiny in the hole, and you know we gotta grab shiny. I guess Harry does it too. Uh, uh, feeling well, around with your hand, you find three knobs. One on the right, one's hand in the middle, one on the left. Press the knobs, dude. It's a secret one. Press uh, right, and then left, and then middle. The knobs lock in place. You wait for a moment, but nothing happens. Okay, I guess we'll go to the gate since we're already over here. Yeah, might as well. You approach the gate cautiously. Huh? Enter. And we're dead. <laughs> Standing before the tower, your heart begins to sink. There's no doubt the birthplace of the spreading plague. Oh, but we need the sword uh. for this. There's a fountain before you with statues on your left, your, on your right and left. Hmm. So we can enter the tower, we can inspect the fountain. Guess statues. The fountain. There's a dark haze about the fountain. The water is black and, s and the smell burns with every breath. You feel a slight pull toward the fountain as if you're calling for s something. Hmm. I don't like that. I guess the statues. What's up, dude? See an old statue of an angel that has been consumed by vines of thorn. The angel is holding a book in one hand. The other is one finger pointed up towards the sky. Peace up. Eight town down. Leave the statue alone. Alright, what's the other statue about? <laughs> this one's looking a little bit more right at my face. Before you stands an old angel statue that has broken to many areas. With one hand, the angel is holding some sort of bowl, while the other hand is hovering over the bowl. You notice that there is only two remaining fingers on the angel's other hands. Weird. I wonder what, if that means anything. I guess just enter the tower. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You approach the door. As you reach for the doorknob, an invisible barrier stops you. Must be some sort of magic. Well, I guess we're leaving. We'll leave, I guess. I guess we're leaving this area, too. Yeah. So this area must be later. So we we're supposed to go left. You pause to see that there's a lake nearby. The trail continues to, yeah, to your right. So this is mm. still the trail. I guess we'll inspect the lake. Step near the lake and look down into it. This is death. Resting underwater is an orb of some sort, sitting on the bottom of the lake. There's something strange about it, as if it were calling to you. Damn it, we need that orb. Let's go. Let's go dive in. We're gonna die here, aren't we? You can already tell. You open your eyes and see the stone sitting before you. You start to make your way towards it. A large fish comes into view. It quickly notices you with its mouth stretched open. It's oh an dear. Fish. You try to leave for the surface, but the fish catches up to you. You're dead. Close your eyes as the giant fish rips your body apart with its teeth. Ow. It's a very painful death. Holy fish. Continue down the trail. Stone hedge. The faint trail comes to an end. There's a collection of stone pillars down the hill. Beyond the hill is a large field of grass. Great. Hmm. Inspect the stone pillars again. Yeah, those seem more interesting to me. Oh man, this is this is where the star men are. I remember this. You stand before the large stones arranged in the shape of a circle. In the center is a stone with what appears to be some sort of slot or hole. You know what to do here. Maybe the thing from the um What'd you take? The lake. The lake, yeah. Or maybe even the sword. Um Faint trail comes to an end. There's a collection of stone. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, explore the field. Find yourself gazing over at a grass field with hills rolling off into the distance. A unicorn! Beth Ann, was that you? <laughs> As if a trick upon your eyes, you see a unicorn run across the field. It disappears out of sight before you can do anything. Surely the unique powers of a unicorn can help you with your quest. What? There's but, clearly something wrong. There's clearly something wrong, yeah. If only there's a way to charm it. Okay. Well, I guess we'll go back. Down the path. There's a well. We should probably save. Some endless grass. Yeah, we should definitely save. Well, we should definitely inspect the well. Yeah. Oh. You peer down the well. Other than the evident water at the bottom, there's a coin resting against the wall of the well. If possible, you feel sh you should go down there and take the coin. We gotta grab the coin. Yeah. You lean over the edge of the well. There's no possible way you can obtain the coin f by reaching for it. With this in mind, you turn and climb down along the inner wall of the well. 
After a few successful steps, your luck runs out. You misplace your foot and you fall. I saw that coming. Yep. Tumbling about, your body cra clashes against the stone walls. With a single knock on your head, you lose all consciousness. With a splash, you fall into the water. Your body sinks effortlessly as you drown without realizing it. We're not going to grab that coin. I was going to say. Ah. Um, we'll continue on for now. Walking over the hills of grass and grain, you reach the walls of Aramore? What is this fucking Lord of the Rings shit going on? Several times a year, you come here to trade goods from your farm. Aramore. You discover the plague that has spread to your farm has also spread all the way out here. The path before you is overrun with blight. Wow. Yeah. I, guess we well, I guess we're walking across. You've come a long way, and you don't desire to turn back now. You march forward into the tainted soil. You'll probably get consumed and die. You, you died. Now from here, there's kind of a puzzle going on because I don't know really where to go. What if it's the statues? Maybe. Okay, so what if the statue on the left is the left one? The middle... I don't know, maybe... One? He's holding one. Maybe, maybe it's one to the left, two on the right. And then... That's it? Exit gate? Maybe that's it? Because you can only press three switches, so... Or maybe it's saying, like, um, that's the first position, this is the second position. Maybe. But I like yours better. So left, right, right. That was it. Okay. That was we not did. too bad. You hear the rumbling of rocks as the ground starts to shift underneath you. Everything goes dark and you sink below the surface. You die. You die. I would be like, well, Hole I guess above that's the game. Above you seals up, trapping you underground. There's no going back? Find yourself with no evident way... But the path before you into darkness, your only choice is to move forward. Well, I guess we save. Now there's a choice to go many other places. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, adventures always go left. And we die. Cautiously make your way through the darkness. Oh. Another split path. Let's go left. Oh, I see. Shit. So let's go left and then maybe go right this time. Yeah. Just to sort of clear out all options. You struggle forward as the way before you becomes completely dark. You notice that there's a light off in the distance, and you continue to make your way forward. Oh. Eventually, you make it. You make it to some sort of concrete room. Turn around. You see a hole in the wall where you came from. Your guess is that this wasn't part of the initial design. You turn around to see a door. There being little to nothing in the room, you decide to move on through the doorway. Oh dear. A lot of scratches. You find yourself in what looks like a basement. You turn about to discover that in each direction there's a door. Boxes of supplies and debris litter the floor and corners of the room. You notice that there are several markings on the doors and floor, some of which scare you. You got a bad feeling about this place. Me too. I guess we should inspect the supplies. Yeah. You find some rope in one of the boxes. Feels strong to the touch and has minimal wear. Okay. Maybe we need that for the coin. Right. Left door. Left door. Left door was the only one without scratches on it. Into a small room with a large hole. There are other objects in the room, but none of them interest you. Let's continue to our death. Oh wow, we're back. Yeah. Okay. I bet you those other scratches are probably death. We can go look at them. Yeah. Let's let's go look. So, I'm going to go middle. That one looks the worst. Hmm. You enter a room full of metal cages. Before you is a hallway marked with questionable markings. You don't like the feeling that you have about this place. Whatever was in these cages surely did not like to be locked up. You notice that there is an animal in the cage on the left of the room. But from the dark stains on its fur, it is dead. You cautiously walk down the hallway, entering a room with two cell doors. Surprise, motherfucker. Before you can do anything, a large hound leaps in front of you. Doesn't look very vici Fuck. vicious, but one wrong move can surely be the end of you. That thing looks like a fucking Doberman rat thing. That thing will kill us. Realizing that you are not prepared for a moment like this, you slowly back away towards the other room. To your, to your dismay, the dog follows your every movement. Oh, shit. Before you can do anything, the dog leaps forward. You don't survive long and die a painful death. Damn it. If I had the sword, I feel like I could handle a lot of this stuff. Alright, so not that one yet. You enter a small room. There's a large cauldron in the center of the room with the wood resting beneath. There's nothing on the shelves as if someone cleaned this place out. 
You look in the pot and find nothing. With nothing else to see in this room, you exit. Okay. So there's nothing in there, so... Enter the door behind you. Whoa! You walk up the steps. I didn't even know this was here. You enter a large room. The air is polluted with dust and spider webs cover the walls and ceilings. This is the tower. Well, we don't want to go downstairs. Can we go outside? Yeah, I guess so. Whoa! So now can we just enter the tower? Oh, are you kidding me? Uh, well, let's go get that coin, I guess. Right, okay. There's no way to use an item. You pull out the rope you found earlier and fasten it to the well. Ah! Climb down with ease and obtain the coin. You struggle to pull yourself up out of the well, but you do so successfully. You then loosen the rope and store it away. Nice, so I kept the rope too, which is good. Um, we could look at these other holes, right? We didn't yet, I don't think. Did we go right? I don't think so. Man, these are questionable. Maybe we should save. Alright, let's go left. What lies beyond? Damn, more fucking holes. All right. As you make your way forward, you discover a large cavern. An old-looking ship rests against the edge of the lake with debris scattered around the surrounding area. Just look at the ship. Fuck it. This is most certainly death. You cautiously walk toward down the ship. Where are the pirate skeletons? The air is chilling, and you fear it won't be a good idea for you to stay long. The possibility of discovering something that, that can help you drives you to explore. Climb aboard the ship. As you take a moment to observe your surroundings... You are only welcomed by the trickle of water brushing against the wood of the ship. You move about to see where you can go. Every footstep you feel you take feels heavy as you hear the sound of wood crack it, cracking under your feet. You feel this ship has been here for quite some time. Yeah, it looks old as fuck. From one room to another, you come to discover a kitchen. Although there's nothing unique about it, you feel you should take a moment to inspect it. Drawers, I guess. Find they've been empty. There's nothing in the drawers. Okay. Check out underneath. You discover a rusty knife resting on the floor. You find that there are plenty of hardened rat droppings. Oh, gross. You take the knife. Maybe we can use that to stab that girl. You see a lone pot resting upon the dusty stovetop. You gaze downward and open the oven door. Nothing but ash filled the oven chamber. You close the oven door. Move on, I guess. You continue your lonely tour of the ship, only to find that there's nothing of use or value. Make your way back up to the deck, and then you peace out. You discover a door with fancy markings about the woodwork. Perhaps this is where the captain resided? I think we're going to use the coin here. You discover the room of the captain. Unlike the other parts of the ship, everything seems to have been left alone in this room. Before you rest an old wooden desk with papers and assumed belongings of the captain. There's a small bed. Gotcha. You have a feeling deep down that you shouldn't take anything. Other than the lamp and other objects... There's a small stack of papers that con contrasts to a lone paper resting by itself. Approaching the desk, you begin to inspect the papers resting on the desk. I guess the, the lone document. Notice to the crew, due to our unexpected predicament, everyone is being split into groups of two and three. Scouting assignments will be given until we have a more habitable place to settle. For now, we must do what we can. Okay, I guess we'll look at the stack of papers. Realize that these are personal notes or journal entries. You pick a few and begin to read. Day 7. The voyage has gone quite smooth as we begin our second week away from home. Yeah, it seems like things are going well. It has been a dream to accomplish something world changing. Together we move forward with full hearts and unbreakable spirits. The next journal entry. We're so fucked! We're dying. Day 66. It has been just over two months at the, out at the sea. Uh, and we have yet to discover anything new. We have suffered through many storms and sickness has plagued the ship recently. Yeah, we are fucked. Yeah, sounds like it's not going well. Several have died. I see the growing doubt in, in the eyes of my fellow laborers as our voyage continues day after day. Yeah, food rations have been cut in half. Those men who have lost their lives, the sacrifices to make this voyage possible, I cannot let them be in vain. Day 91, they're going to be in vain because we're out. Dude, 91 days on the fucking ocean. That's a long time on the ocean. That's a fuck ton of time on the ocean. It has come to roughly three months out, out here on the endless blue. With much pain, we have turned around. Yes, we are headed for the home port. We have just enough food to make it back and we hope 
to have a smooth journey back. They fucking really did not finish their journey. The spirits of the crew are low and bitter due to this due to our failure. Oh, Jesus. Well, I guess we'll leave. So we're leaving the whole pirate ship. It doesn't look like there was anything really valuable there. Yeah. Did I go left? Uh, we went right into the cave, so... Move forward into the darkness. Oh, we're back here. So let's go right. And I think we want to go right again, I believe. Right? Ah. The passageway soon ends within a large mushroom sitting in front of you. A steady river of water flows between you and the mushroom. We should not inspect this mushroom. We're going to do it anyway. You walk towards the mushroom as if there is something more to it than meets the eyes. Walking forward, you take a step into the water. To your dismay, your foot hits no bottom and you fall in. You reach to grab hold of the edge of the surface, but your body freezes stiff. You're dead. So, middle, we don't know much about, I think. I believe that's correct. I think we've been here. No, never. Oh, fuck no. Come to a divide. Which way will you go? I like that this is here. Like, it's a marker, it helps me know where I'm going. Yeah. Here's a subtle e echo of shifting rocks before you. An eye appears before you as its gaze pierces the darkness. <laughs> what was I gonna fight it? Before you can do anything, tentacles burst from the ground and grip your body. It's like one of my Japanese animes. It pulls you about, but you resist it as much as you can. It's an intense fucking scene. You remember the knife that you found and struggle to bring it out. With success, you hold the knife and begin to cut away the appendages that bind you. Oh, This worked! The room vibrates as you do cut and the creature immediately leaves you alone. Take a moment to catch your breath. Holy shit. That worked. Come to a divide. Which way do you go? <laughs> I guess you go left and die. That was interesting. Oh, okay. Wait, so What the fuck? That was just a circle back. Oh, go right, I guess. Hmm. The path you walk comes to an end. Before you shines a pillar of light. Oh, we're about to beat the game. The light rests on a corpse that seems to have been here for quite some time. Near the corpse stands a lone flower. This is for the sword. For some reason, you feel hope into your heart as you gaze upon the flower. Surely, this flower will ease the, the pain of the specter. You approach the flower and carefully pluck it from the ground. I wonder if it would have said anything about the specter if we didn't If talk we didn't talk to him. Yeah. Because it, it would just ruin it. Yeah. There's something special about this flower. Eat it. Light continues, continues to pierce through the darkness from the opening above. This gives you some hope that not all is all is not lost. Blah. Seeing that there's nothing else for you here, you turn around. Turn all right, around. there's a lot to do here. Yeah. I guess we could save and check some things out. Yeah, let's go ahead and go upstairs. Well, maybe we'll do the far door. Yeah, let's try it. Shit. The door struggles to move, but... You enter into what appears to be a spider's den. We're dead. Damn it. The air is thick and the room is a mess of web and body parts. You notice that there are a couple items in the room that could be useful. If nothing else, there's a key on the ground that you will no doubt need. But That's there's a big, a big ass spider. spider. No doubt it's hungry. Without hesitation, the spider attacks you. You pull out your knife and stab the spider when you can. Unfortunately, the knife doesn't scare the spider and it bites you with ease. Yeah, he's not spooked to the knife. I like how it brings up the knife. We're gonna need the sword. Okay, so I don't want to go in there. Upstairs. Oh, got a nice star. Let's see, we can learn some fucking magic here. You discover what looks like a private library. Cool. Um, the books. Take a moment to look at the books. the books. Some of them catch your eye. Uh, Rituals of the Ancients. Sounds good. Flip through. Pillars of Stone. Oh. Oh. Stonehenge. Ye years before current times. There were unique religious practices that involved the Stonehenge. It is said that these stones are lined up in a special way and often organized in a circular pattern. Organizing the stones this way unlocks an ancient power researchers still have trouble understanding. In the middle of the circle would be a stone or two for the keystone to rest on. This is the great mystery of this ancient practice. From ancient records, it is written that the energies from the surrounding stones channel their power into the keystone. You stop reading because the next page of the book is turn, t torn out. The art of charming is not necessarily limited to the instrument, but how the musician goes about playing given instrument. Some are definitely easier to use than others, and for a skill such as this, there are a few instruments recommended. The harp is one of these recommended instruments, from vicious dogs to shy unicorns. We've seen both of those. The soothing voice of the harp 
can calm it, the troubled heart. Of course, not all creatures can fall for this simple trick, but it can mean the difference between life and death in some situations. So maybe we don't need the sword for the doggo. We just need the um, a harp or something. Raw energy is a powerful substance not to be trifled with. It is, it is merely myth that such energies exist. One does not simply stumble upon a pillar of godly power, even if such a fate is yours. Bare hands cannot contain the force. It must be bent and channeled into a specially crafted vessel to carry it. There have been accounts across time of individuals possessing such power. Although they pass away as sand, their relics of their relics of power remain as powerful artifacts that nations around the world would fight for. Maybe you find a harp. Mm. Uh, this ain't looking good. You walk up the stairs. You pause as you notice a stone carving of a person praying at the attack that's attached to the wall. There's something odd about it, but you can't put your finger on it. With caution, you continue up the stairs. Shit. You enter a strange room with a large globe centered about the room. There are windows that let the light shine through. You notice that there's a chest resting against the wall to the right. You also notice that there's another passageway like the previous room. Hmm, okay. Inspect the globe, I guess? Yeah. You study the globe attached to the floor surface. The craft is made of metal. And there's, a fi there's fine detail in the grooves. There are various markings and names scattered across the globe. It takes you a moment, but you find a marking of where you are, Aramore. You notice that there are some hand-drawn markings within the area, made with black ink. There must be something close by that has interested the author of these markings. To add to the mystery, there are similar markings on other areas around the globe. Hmm. I don't know what that's all about. Open the chest. There's a lock. Oh, I have no key, but I know where there's a key. I guess I should continue forward more. I guess so. You climb the stairs to find a wall ending your path. Above the end of the stairway is a hatch. Let's see. Yeah, open this looks hatch. like death. You open the hatch and pull yourself up. It's not locked, unfortunately. Dark vines have entangled the structure as if they were feeding off the energies of the stone. What's that limitless power thing? Your body begins to tremble as you stand before the stone. You definitely feel weaker being up here, as if the stone is sapping away your energy. Destroy the stone. This may be your only chance. You approach the stone and grasp onto it. We're going to die here. You lose sight and feeling immediately as your hands become glued to the stone. Oh, dear. Ah. Your adventure ends here. You know, we knew that would happen, but... We don't have any power here. I think we still open the hatch. We just have to maybe, bail. Maybe we could like, leave from it, yeah. Leave the stone. To your surprise, you find it difficult to focus. Tell you hit your... <laughs> Jesus Christ. With Bro a broken neck, <laughs> you still die! <laughs> okay, okay. We're just gonna bail on that then. Mr. Ghost. We have the flower. Without hesitation, you reach for the flower and give it to the spirit. The spirit grabs the flower from your hand as you extend it to him. You feel a subtle breeze blow as the figure fades away with the flower. A faint whisper dances about the air. I am free at last. Yeah, enjoy that freedom. You feel a sense Finish. of relief within you as you reach for the sword. You now wield the special weapon. All right, spider boy, we got we got a fucking sword for your ass this time. You pull out your sword and stab the spider as it lunges at you. Over and over again, you stab the monster. Each time it squeals in pain. Hell yeah. So that was right. The spider flees into the darkness overhead. You hear it motioning about, possibly to strike again. You notice the key on, on the ground close by your feet. Before more trouble happens, you quickly grab the key. Gotcha. Oh. Feel like you got what you need. There's no reason to go back in that room again. With the key found earlier, you try it on the lock. The lock clicks loose and you open the chest. Nice. You discover uh -huh. a small wooden harp resting on linen cloth. Take the cloth. You take the harp and close the chest. All right. So okay. Let's go outside. Do you want to go unicorn or you want to go doggy first? Let's go unicorn first. You seem safer. Unicorn. I got a harp for you. Ding, 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 ding. Unsure what's going on, you think of a way to tame the beast. Suddenly you remember the harp you found earlier. With the harp in hand, you pluck the strings. A, the soothing calm comes over you as you listen. Great. The unicorn comes into view and stops before you. The unicorn glares at you and begins, and you begin to hear a faint voice in your head. Human! Have ear for my words. A great evil has gripped these lands. And it has rendered me powerless. You must find some way to stop it. 
I wish I could help you, but without my full power, I can do little. The fate of this land depends on you. Thanks, Uni. That's it, bitch. Before you speak, the unicorn runs off. You realize that you are alone to complete this quest of yours. This is no longer about saving your farm. You must save the whole land from the spreading darkness. Turn back as you question what you should do next. So I guess I'm going to go back to the dog. Yo, sup, doggo. Weird looking thing. Large hound leaps in front of you. The beast doesn't look very vicious. You pull out the harp and begin to pluck the strings. The hound begins to wag its tail. I made a friend. To your surprise, the beast walks away as if it were charmed by your harp. You never gave it much thought how powerful music can be. Hell yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and drop another save, actually. Yeah. Um, so on the left, I guess. You open the door to find a skeleton positioned in the corner of the room. Why not in the bed? There's also... Uh, there's also bed and some chains attached to the wall. You have no doubt that this individual was locked up for a long time. Expecting the skeleton, you notice a ring on one of its bone fingers. Maybe a keystone? There's a faint glow of light emanating from the ring, as if it were magical. You may find such a ring useful. You take the ring and put it on. Perfect fit. Putting it on is a little... <laughs> a little excessive. Seeing that there's nothing of interest, you'll leave the cell. Guess the cell door on the right. Probably death. You enter the cell door on the right and see a wooden ta table on its side, some debris from the floors, and a large hole in the corner of the room. See nothing special, you motion towards the hole. You fucked up. You discover a passageway underground. Unfortunately, all you can see is fallen rock blocking the way through. Seeing that there's little you can do, you go back the way you came. Okay. Oh, no death. So that's something. Just not yet. Maybe now we can access the stone head. With the ring, maybe. Yeah. That's the best bet um, that I have as well. Can't do anything yet. Maybe try the lake. I guess we'll dive in. Maybe the ring will help us in some way here. Mm, it's looking pretty bad. So oh, I put the sword in his mouth! Swish fish swims at you with haste. Just as it gets in range, you thrust the sword into the top of its mouth. The sword penetrates and goes through the forehead of the fish. It struggles about in pain as blood filters through the water. Oh, I didn't even think about the sword on him. You pull the sword out of the fish and it retreats out of sight. You know, you doubt it will live long. With the fish no longer a threat, you make your way to the orb. Holding your hand, you feel it vibrate as if there's an energy inside trying to break loose. This must be important. Mm. I would say that might be the keystone. You remember the orb that you found on the floor of the lake nearby? Ah, it is working. You place the orb in the slot carved into the center rock. The stones that surround you begin to glow. The light radiates and glows brighter. With a flash of light, your surroundings change. Oh dear. The ground no longer is grass. The newly discovered floor appears to be very old, as if crafted by somebody long ago. Rubble and stone near the edges of the platform also hint that this is very this is an ancient place. Looking onward, at the end of the pathway is a fountain of light. There seems to be no beginning or end, an endless power is steadily flowing. You're amazed. Guided by the light. Maybe you need the ring to not get fucked up by the light. Maybe. Rays of light brush about you as if they are seeking to break away from its home. You remember the ring you have Hell found and yeah. points towards the light. Our secret decoder ring. <laughs> Your hand trembles as light flows into it. Before you can think the ring is the ring begins to burn and you stumble back. You die. Light shines brightly from the ring. You notice a subtle warmth to it as you as you observe. You feel that you accomplished what you must do here. You pick up the orb. With the orb back in your possession, you walk back towards the trail. Okay. Okay. All right. So my guess is we can use this newly powered you ring. Just fucking ring, fuck the fucking source. Yeah, Sorry. that's what I'm thinking. I don't think there's anything else. It's really weird that there was a whole thing with that girl earlier, but we can't even go back there at all. Yeah, the game definitely shifted halfway through in, the, in, in terms of pace and tone. It's like the journey to get to this this one point was just about ignoring shit so you wouldn't die. Yeah, once we hit that split path, it was just over. And that's when the game opened up and it was like, this is different now, which is cool. I definitely like the second half over the first half. Yeah, open the hatch. Oh, the first half is bad, but it was more like fucking ghost... Not ghosts. Ghosts, wait... What the fuck am I thinking about? You know those fucking books? Goosebumps. Goosebumps. It's like those Goosebumps adventure things where you just like, 
Oh, well, I guess I should probably not do that. Well, what, what happens? Oh, I'm dead. Dark finds, right. Can we use our ring on it? Definitely feel weaker. Destroy it. Oh, yeah, there's the ring. You stretch forth your fist and point the ring at the stone. Dude, we're going to fist bump it. You can feel resistance as if the stone is trying to defend itself. You try to keep hope and focus on the ring. Oh, fuck yeah. A burst of light shoots out from the ring, penetrating the stone. You feel the very air shake about. The ground beneath your feet begins to vibrate. The ring becomes heavier to hold in place, but you know that it is working. You feel confidence and a sense of joy sweep over you. Hopefully Beth Ann will live because of this. <laughs> Probably not. The light intensifies nearly blinding you. The ground beneath you shakes violently as if the tower itself was trying to stop you. What little fear in you becomes powerless as you focus on your task. Everything goes white, blinding you completely. You're blind? A weird sensation comes over you and you feel as light as a feather. Oh, we're dead. You begin to feel a tingling sensation all over your body as you hone your, your senses. The feeling suddenly flees your body and you find yourself motionless. Everything is cold and your ability to concentrate begins to leave you. You open your eyes, witnessing what's left of the tower. We beat it. You begin to feel something. Warmth. Light. It's coming back. Fucking unicorn! Hell yeah. You lack the strength to talk as the unicorn comes into view. I wonder if we didn't even have to talk to the unicorn and if we could have destroyed the tower without it saving us. We're, I'm assuming it's about to save us. Potentially. Light emanates from the horn of its head. All you can do is smile as the creature approaches. The light intensifies. You may have saved the lamb, but the unicorn has come to save you. I really think if we don't talk to that unicorn, he doesn't save us there. Your adventure does not end here. That's a good way. That's a good line to end on. <sighs> That's pretty cool. So that was pretty nice, actually. I was kind of worried about this game when I heard it was all going to be, like, uh, just uh, choose-your-own-adventure type of thing. Yeah. But it was Which actually... Which it was, like, the first half. But What's... it was actually really fun trying to figure out where to go, how to do things. There was a lot of, like... Still very choose your adventure There was a lot of King's quest -y type of death scenarios, which were all funny. Um, but yeah. uh, uh, because you can save anywhere, that kind of makes it really nice to actually explore those options and see what's up with them. I think the only thing we did explore is what happens when we sleep in the bed in the beginning. Because um, we yeah. never did that. But maybe you guys can do that and let us know what happens. Um, but that's it for now. So be sure to grab Shine of Your Day. And we'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Bye.